Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today I'm going to be taking a look at the relatively puny Samsung SM951 and it's an M.2 drive but it's one of the newer uh, M.2 drives because there are two different M.2 drives, one is SATA and then one is PCI Express. We reviewed the on the website the uh, M.2 Samsung 850 uh, not so long ago actually and that was one of the SATA variants. This is the fully fledged PCI Express variant. Now the problem with this PCI Express variant is it's actually pretty damn fast. So you do need one of the higher end motherboards, so an X99 motherboard or a uh, PCI Express add-in card to be able to get the full speed from it. And you may be wondering yourself, why PCI Express, it's all the same thing, because M.2 does go into PCI Express. But on the uh, Z97 board, it's actually PCI Express 2 bandwidth, or very, 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 very little amounts of PCI Express 3, but it's normally um, uh, PCI Express 2. On our test rigs and on pretty much most of the uh, Asus Z97 range, in fact, I think it's all of the Asus Z97 range, uh, the M.2 shares PCI Express 2 bandwidth because then it doesn't interfere with the very limited amount of PCI Express 3 that you have available. On a Z97 board, for example, there's only 16 lanes of it. So if you've got a graphics card in, it's using them. If you've got two graphics cards in, they're sharing and they have eight lanes each. So when it goes up to um, uh, the X99 platform, you actually get four lanes of PCI Express 3 bandwidth. So you're now saying to me, what's the difference, Tom? Well, there's a theoretical ceiling of 800 megabits a second if you've got it on PCI Express 2. But if you go up to PCI Express 3, it's 4,000 megabits a second. So a huge difference. And it also makes a huge difference to this drive, which is what we're going to show you, because I have tested it in this board in our M.2 slot, which is on the board, which you can just screw it in and just get away with it. And then I've also used it with the PCI Express 3 add-in card and tested it on the card. I didn't want to test it with our X99 rig because if we did that, it skews the other results if you want to click the magic thing that's going to pop up. Let's go to the main OC3D website because we do test things like a PC Mark 7 and PC Mark 8 as well. And if we were to use the X99 setup, a lot of those results will all get skewed because the CPU still does get taken into account. So we've kept it all nice and fair, and uh, it also shows you the difference between running it on board in one of the mainstream systems, which is what most of you guys are going to have. Now I'm not going to go too much into all the ins and outs and uh, gubbins now. I'm going to talk to you about it at the end in the conclusion, so we'll crack straight on with results and stuff, because that's what most of you are going to hear about. But those of you like that like the TTL ramble, get your cup of tea ready for the conclusion and I'll run you through some of the problems that you may have if you want to run such a high-end performance product like this and also tell you a little story of why it's taken me months to get one. So this is just a selection of the benchmarks you run and it's just a screenshot and it's just a really quick way of me showing you the difference between the two. So this result is with our, our M.2 slot on the Z97 board. It's going to be the same for pretty much every Z97 board that you've got out there. So for all you mainstream boys, this is what you can expect. Now the, the scores there are epic. They really are absolutely brilliant. But this is one of the few times that you're ever going to hear me use the word bottleneck. Because generally when you say bottleneck, it's because uh, it's, a, it's a noob term. I'll, I'll get fed up with people talking to me about graphics cards being bottlenecks and stuff like that. It really is a ridiculous noob term and you should hang your head in shame if you use it far too often. But this time, it really is. And the, the um, SSD has completely saturated all of the bandwidth available possible to it and is then sat there in the background with loads more to offer. That much more to offer. A horrific amount more to offer almost double um, yes we have got a, a, a ceiling with the PCI Express 3 on this of about 4,000 megabits a second um, 
but you know we've got nothing that's going to be able to saturate all that bandwidth at the moment but as you can see that you know straight in the middle that's the one that your eyes are going to go to we've got a 1700 megabits a second read on the sequential for crystal disk mark and then 1570 right but if you cast your eyes to the bottom of the atto disk mark you can see 1600 and 2200 megabits a second so we're trying this new way of showing you graphs but it does mean that I have to have the graphs in my hands because I'm kind of making them magically appear and stuff. But anyway, so Crystal Dismark, uh, the read to start off with because it's generally the faster one. And you can actually see that it's at the top of this graph. Um, and the sequential is the big one, 1716 megabits a second. Even the Intel, which I might add, was a £900 uh, PCI Express proper full-on add-in drive, yes it was 1.2 terabytes, but it was also the quicker of the two that they do, um, was only getting 1655. Now we thought we were hitting the limit of uh, Crystal Dismark, still could possibly there really, but if we then move on to the uh, right speeds, and oh look, this Samsung is at the top again. So we've got 1570 there, and uh, the Intel was only getting 1300. Now, like I said, 900 pound drive, there was a lot of difference. The only time that the uh, Intel would win out with between these two in all of the graphs will be 4K writes because the 4K writes on that are absolutely mind blowing. It's one of the things where it, that's the point that it takes a massive leap forward. So for all of you out there, if you're wondering what 4K writes means, it's generally if you're copying loads of little files like your iTunes over or uh, just hundreds or thousands of you know, small images, little JPEG images or something like that, that's when the 4K writes come into it. It's lots and lots of little tiny ones and generally drives just, they, 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 they can't handle it. New Intel can. The, the Samsung uh, did actually do really well. Um, uh, it's still uh, at the top of the graph in the 4K writes if you were to take the Intel out. If we were to then move on to Atto read, you can see again that we've got the, um, uh, the uh, Samsung at the top. The Intel would have gone screaming out into the distance if you have a look, well, we sorted them differently. We sorted them by the 128K rather than the 124K. It was just to give you a rough idea, but you can still see the Intel there. If you wanted to put the Intel, it would be at the top for that one because uh, that was uh, 2584. And it was one of the points that it really did romp off into the distance. But when you consider that we were getting 22,600, sorry, 20, no, 22, 2,264 on the uh, Samsung, and it only costs 300 quid for the 512 meg that we're testing. You can kind of understand why we arranged it in that way. Uh, if you then go on to the right again, you can see that it's actually pro you know, pretty much level pegging with the Intel on the 124K on this one. But all of the others, it's actually in front. Right then, so very rapidly moving on to the conclusion. And I'll give you the, the rough wrap up of this and then I'll go into... Uh, my kind of in-depth kind of you know trying to educate you a little bit on stuff uh, beyond that but um, uh, the award it would be the OC 3D Gold Award. Uh, one of the things I will say is I've put a link underneath because you can buy these from Quiet PC. You might be wondering why I'm kind of actually name dropping but they are actually really difficult to get hold of and that's why we're going to talk about the uh, you know going into it uh, at the well now really we might as well just get on with it. So I've known about the SM951 for quite some time, and I've been, I have actually been trying to get hold of it since last year. Um, it's technically an enterprise product. So what I did, uh, when the 850 Pro was first announced, I went to an event in London, it was in January, uh, and I only went because I knew the Samsung people would be there and I would get to go and go face to face with them and go, why can't we get hold of these things? Because it's amazing. Um, you've been able to get them f through very limited uh, retailers. They're normally the type of retailers that you look at and you go, oh, I don't particularly want to buy it from there. I don't want to take the risk. It's one of the ones where you're just not sure. So, you know, even I've not bothered. Samsung's official answer was that they were enterprise and OEM only. They were just testing the market and we'd have another newer one. Uh, well, I say not a newer one, but we'd have the more mainstream one coming out uh, later this year. We are hearing that um, it's, it, you know, they're starting to send out PRs and stuff, 
about the newer one because essentially they don't want you to get hold of this one. And that might sound really strange, but I talk to a lot of e-tailers in the UK and uh, they've not been able to get them to the point where even Samsung have been telling them that they don't want them to sell them to end users as just uh, you know a normal product. They're meant to be going out to OEMs uh, to just be put into you know like when they make their own laptops, you know you know rebrand laptops and stuff like that. And they have been found in some Macs, but they don't want them just coming out to us noobs. Do you know what I mean? At, at the end, do you know what I mean? All us mainstream, all us enthusiasts, they don't want us to have them yet. Um, so essentially, Quiet PC are found somewhere that they can get them from and they're buying them up as quickly as they can possibly get their hands on them. So if you're actually interested in getting your hands on one of these, then uh, click the link underneath and you can go in there. The 120 starts at 110 quid and the 512 is 300 quid, which um, uh, 390 pounds, sorry, which for a 512 SSD is actually still pretty good. Yes, you can get some normal two and a half inch one terabytes for that money. But the one thing that you need to remember is it's going to be almost three or four, three, three, I'll say my T, um, uh, three or four times as fast. Now this is where uh, before you click buy, you need to calm your boots and you need to come and sit and listen. Because PCI Express lanes are the critical thing with this drive. Without the PCI Express lanes, you are not going to get that speed. So if you buy the drive, you're going to need to get yourself an add-in card if you're running Z97. But do remember that if you are running your graphics card uh, in the top slot and you're running Z97, if you put the M.2 SSD in your second slot, then your graphics card is then going to be running on eight lanes because it will step it down because you've got a second item in the second slot. So if you've got two items in there, graphics card gets eight, it will allot eight PCI Express lanes to the bottom. I don't think it will go four and 12. It's generally the eight step. Um, uh, but and because and if you were to have a, another product in, say for instance, say you're on Z97 with two graphics cards already, then uh, and then you put the uh, solid state drive with your adding card in the third slot that you might have, you'll be running eight in your top graphics card, four in the second one, and then the four allotted to the SSD as well. So that's why you have to be very careful with this. Um, obviously we wanted to show you that if you just have a Z97 board and just plumb it straight into your M.2, it will get held back. It's one of the few times you'll ever hear me use the word bottleneck, but I prefer saturated because it makes me sound like less of a noob. Uh, and yes, I do mean noob. Anyone that uses the word bottleneck, try and avoid it. It's like the word sponsored. It's dirty. Uh, to me, it's dirty anyway. It's, y y we're not going to go off on a tangent. So. You need your PCI Express 3 to get it in. If you're running uh, X99, then the M.2 on the X99, most of the boards are pretty much set up already to put the M.2 into four lanes of PCI Express 3 natively out of the box. That's where all of the, the motherboards that are going to be coming out soon with the NVMe, MSAS connector and all that type of stuff, that's why they're able to do that because it's plumbed hardline straight in. Uh, that's why if you've got a... Uh, 5930K or a 5960X with 40 lanes of PCI Express 3. There's uh, 32 available for the board itself, and then there's eight magically kind of hidden in the in the wilderness, and uh, that means you can actually have two of the uh, high-end hard drive products running on four each, and then there are some PCI Express 2 ones, which just confuses everything. But uh, that's why they're set out that way. Um, if you're going to be running a 5820, then you're going to need to look at your board and see how they, they step the graphics cards and your, uh, your drive products back. So it's, it's a crazy product that Samsung you know, particularly don't want us to know that much about at the moment. If you want it, if it's going to suit you and it's going to fit in with your rig and all that type of stuff, and you want to jump on this 2000 megabit a second or gigabit a second, however you want to put it, um, uh, SSD bandwagon nice and early, jump on it. It's probably the cheapest way that you're going to be able to, um, at least for the time being anyway, but things are going to progress. Um, and as you can see, I am an enthusiast as well. I've been chasing after this drive for months and the second I found out um, Quiet PC were going to be getting some, I was hot on the phone to Skippy and I was like, I need to be reviewing this. Uh, and I think it's done itself justice as well. So the link is underneath. You've, you've had the warning, you've been given all of the, the, the things that you do need to consider if you're going to be buying one of these.
but if you're on for all out, you know what I mean, crazy mental solid state drive speeds, then I've, that's right, I was just looking around to see where I put it. Then this, this little puppy is the fastest thing on the block at the moment. Um, it's, there are some other PCI Express products that are coming out that are gonna be black and stuff, but I have them here and they're not as fast as this. So if you're gonna be saying to me, oh, but such and such has just released the product, it's not as fast, it doesn't even come close. So if you want the best without selling your kidney to buy an Intel, it's that. Hey.